Hey, you know, the way that the shoulders wind up has a great influence on how consistently straight you're going to hit the golf ball. Not only that, but when it's done right, when the shoulders are wound up really well, it's also an extra source of power you can tap into. So right after this, let's get into some of the major keys that you're going to need to learn if you're going to get the benefit out of turning and winding the shoulders correctly. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee and with an emphasis on the straighter as I've been blamed lately for you just are all about distance and swinging out of your shoes. And I don't know why people think that because I always say that I'm looking to hit it longer and straighter because distance is not effective unless it is under control. So if you're on a similar journey to me and you want to hit the ball really straight, but also smash it down the fairway like the best drivers on TV, then hey, uh, consider hitting the subscribe button, uh, liking this video. If you liked it at the end, and don't forget to leave a comment down, down below because that helps drive the YouTube algorithm and helps me out. All right, so we're talking about keys that make up a really good shoulder wind up or the use of the shoulders. You might call it a shoulder turn if you like. The first thing I'd like to do is get it from the horse's mouth. And that's my mentor, legendary long driver and teacher Mike Austin here on his 1960 KHJ Los Angeles Channel 9 TV show. Let's hear what he has to say about winding up the shoulders. When I get to the top of the backswing, you'll see that this right knee is flexed out like this. It gives me a big base to establish a balance with. Rotation of the shoulder into this position right here winds up the, small, the large muscle of the small of the back so I can utilize those to create force with when I shift over to the left leg to start the downswing. If you maintain a steady position with the left arm like a figure seven, letting this be a, an axle about which this hub and this spoke rotates, you can time this thing correctly just by unfolding the things that folded on the backswing. So that's a really cool demonstration and some insight as to how we're going to use the shoulders to their maximum um, potential to help us not only hit the ball far, uh, people often associate winding up the shoulders as just power, but winding up the shoulders well and really correctly is also an enormous key in not only hitting the ball straight, but hitting it very consistently straight. Let's look at some of the major keys now. So first, one of the big influences on the way the shoulders turn are the wheel. An axle and a wheel is how Mike Austin used to describe it, is how much hip bend we're doing. So if I was standing straight up and down, which, you know, some people actually swing like this, they get all the bend down to the ground from the knees and they sit straight up and down like this. Even books back in the 60s and 70s used to advocate this is set up. The problem with this is that you're going to tend to wind more like a merry-go-round. With the balls down there more at an angle, this is not going to be very conducive towards making good contact and hitting the ball straight every time. So what we're really looking for in our first key to winding up the shoulders is the correct bend at the hips. So I've got the rear end stuck out behind me a bit more to counteract the weight going over my toes and I'm looking for about a, a 30 degree angle here at the hips to bend. Now all of a sudden, once you have this right angle, and of course the steeper you go over like this, or the further you bend, the more that the natural wind up is gonna have some more vertical in it. So not just this horizontal merry-go-round, but as somebody, I, I really like this idea somebody gave me is, it's not a merry-go-round or a Ferris wheel, but it's a, a tilt-a-whirl. So we've gotta have some tilt to the shoulders as well as tilt. In essence, we're looking to wind the shoulders on the correct axis, which means they have to have some horizontal and some vertical, and that's gonna start with the bend of the hip. Now, the second big thing that influences it's probably the biggest thing that influences the shape of the shoulder turn is the action of the hips. And the big mistake that most people make is to cause, even if they get, do get into the right setup here, is 
they tend to kind of make the hips overturn too flat or too much like a merry-go-round and when you're doing that the club shaft tends to suck too far to the inside so if you watch yourself on video and you say well that looks familiar I do take the club back too far to the inside you probably got the shoulders turning too watch this turning too flat you see as my hips overturn too flat my shoulders will have a tendency to go with them even if I am bent plenty I could still turn flat and you see that's going to cause the club to want to go to the inside and already we've got the the handle path that we just don't want to make that big of an error with the handle path going back because it's just simply too far to recover um, transitioning and coming down in order to make up the difference in the wheel so let's say that I did overturn the hips and I bring it up I'm gonna have to almost come over top from there to get the club back out in front of me again and get the path of the club back on line with the target so you would say that I a wobble in the wheel so it looked like a wobble in the wheel would look like this and so you can see the beginnings of an over the top move here as I turn too flat and I've got to raise this right shoulder to get the club back around in front of me just so I can make a proper divot and get the ball going reasonably straight so that's what Mike would call a wobble in the wheel so instead we really need to put some tilt into the shoulders so we have the right bend here by putting a little bit of tilt into the hips so I'm gonna make the hips tilt up and down more and see that's causing the shoulders to turn much steeper like this so now I can come down and I will not have wobble in the wheel and I can really get number one the back in front of the ball much easier the path of my club will be straighter and without me having to do any correcting at the top and I'll really be ready to go for hitting it consistently straight it's a big key now when it comes to the shoulders you've heard a lot about the shoulders turn the bigger the shoulder turn the more power you're going to get and to some extent that's true um, what you need to know about getting an uh, extra shoulder turn that you might not have been getting before is that the the shoulders themselves the joints themselves they can do a multitude of actions they can do up and down in and out what we're talking about is the shoulder and the scapula which is the the wing your wing bone behind you in your upper back and what you can do with that is you can work that into the shoulder movement by number one I will what's called abduct or pull this shoulder blade away from the spine some people know it as protraction which is this way and so I'm really pulling that shoulder under my chin and I'm stretching out all the muscles right here in the upper back just like that so I can actually get more shoulder turn by protracting that shoulder blade pulling it away from the spine and trying to get it underneath my chin now conversely the right scapula or shoulder blade will be abducted adducting sorry adducting which means to pull closer to the center line in this case the spine and that would look something like this like I'm doing a, a rowing machine at the gym so this way pulling that shoulder back this way okay so when I add those two things together I'm able to get an extra 20 or 30 degrees of shoulder turn so we're looking to protract or abduct this one pull this shoulder blade back and all of a sudden we're getting one hell of a shoulder turn probably an extra 20 or 30 degrees that you maybe you didn't know you had by working the scapula into the shoulder motion that's going to give you a ton of extra power built in without you having to really work for it at the bottom so a great drill to do is without a club just take your bow and you're going to do kind of like a helicopter exercise i'm going to put my watch this i'm going to put my arms out to my sides like this take my bow that gives me the angle down to the ball 
and I'm just gonna wind up my trunk, making sure that my right arm goes high. And there's some steepness to the line between your arms this way, as opposed to if I have my arms out like this and I go this way, See, I must be have overturned the hips and turned very flat shouldered. So it's also a great way to fix a flat shoulder back swing. Well, something that I keep working on because I get a little, a little trouble with getting the club back to the inside and turning a little too flat. So I would over exaggerate this way. And I would actually feel more of a vertical line between my two arms this way. And that's something I want to feel more after I pick up the club and I start hitting some golf balls with it. So you could film yourself from the down the line angle and you can kind of determine based on the, the bow and the angle of the shoulders and the direction the club starts in, well, are you turning too flat? And if so, you can do the Steve shoulder turn drill where we're just going dead vertical with the arms like they're going up a ferris wheel that'll really put a restriction or over tilt the hips as the hips are under turning so a little bit of an over exaggeration of what the problem normally is then i'll just pick up like a nine iron and i'll just pitch some balls out there feeling this same action all right i got the driver out let me take a couple cracks at it. The first, first one is going to be from this down the line angle and I'm really going to work on getting my shoulders to wind up with the proper steepness. So starting at the proper bend, winding them up with the proper uh, steepness so that I get a reasonable amount of, of angle so that the club wants to just head straight back at the camera. So let me give that a try here. Okay, now hitting a driver from the face-on angle, what I'm gonna be focusing on here is, again, winding up the shoulder blades or the scapula, get, really give myself a look of a bigger shoulder turn and really a wider arc at the top of the swing. Let's see if I can do that now. Now my favorite angle is looking back up the line from the green looking back. I think from this angle you'll be able to see a combination of the steepness or the correct amount of tilt to the shoulders uh, because of the bow, because of the left side bend that I'm putting into this to get a little steeper. You know, I think you'll also see the full wind up will put the camera or the, my back completely at the camera here with the big full wind up. Let's give it a try. See if I don't don't break the camera. So hey, I hope this video provided a little bit more insight onto the ideal way that you want to wind the shoulders up um, steep enough coming down so that you don't have to have any kind of wobble or change of directions, but up and down on the same plane you'd like the club to go in because that really makes it easy for the club to just kind of fall in line with the direction the shoulders are moving in. Hey, thanks for tuning in again. Um, thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us today. And I'll either see you in the next video or 
I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.